Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here and today we continue with the series of interviews with Ken Waller and in, in today's video Ken talks about how Steve Reeves was his idol and describes his desire to look like Steve Reeves as he was chasing the aesthetic symmetrical look Reeves was so famous for. Enjoy. Um, back to bodybuilding now. Um, at the time, uh, of course, you know, we're talking early 70s now. Um, you've moved to California, you've, you've started bodybuilding and, you know, entering shows. Um, at the time though, keeping one's physique in proportion and looking aesthetically pleasing was like much more prominent than what it is, I would say, nowadays. But what was your vision in creating your physique? Did you want to be as massive, as big as possible, or did you want to develop that, that more symmetrical physique, a leaner look? Because from what I've seen, you, you were pretty massive back for you. Uh, you know, for that well, time. Thing, yeah, but if you look, the thing about me, I wanted, I wanted my calves and my arms to be the same size. Mm -hmm. And so, at one time, I, uh, Arnold and I measured our, our arms in the gym, and mine were twenty and a quarter, and and the calves were twenty and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Now this wow. was pumped, this was pumped up, and. Uh, usually, my calves were about 19 and a half, uh, not pumped up, and, mm -hmm. and the arms were about the same size, and that's what I was looking for. I was trying to, uh, I didn't, I, I could, uh, I got over 600 pounds for squats, for reps, but I didn't like to do uh, too much leg exercises because I didn't want my legs, uh, my thighs just to balloon out and be bigger than my upper body. So I, I even though at, at one time uh, I always weighed around 230 for shows, mm -hmm. I didn't, I wanted that pleasing look, more like a, a Steve Reeves look, more than, like the bodybuilders now, uh, I, I, hats off to them working that hard and doing what they got to do. Uh, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I, I can imagine. I mean, now it's just a, a free show, but um, yeah, I, I, can... I don't want to say too much. I don't want to run it down. Yeah. But uh, I remember when I went to a show. I used to work for uh, Extreme Active Wear, and we made all the uh, the clothing, and they still do for Gold's Gym. Mm -hmm. And we used to have a the Gold's Gym uh, uh, show. Uh, oh, the fitness stuff once a year, you know, with the gym, gym equipment companies and everything would come. And, and I met uh, a Mr. Olympia there, and we started talking. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about, and now he didn't really say steroids, but we were talking, and he says, well, it uh, I spent $35,000 uh, on the last Mr. Olympia show. Oh, man. <laughs> Just for... Just for product, he said. He called it product. Jeez. He says, and that's just for product, he says, that doesn't count uh, all the other, uh, you know, whatever. Eating and... I thought, and... Are you God. <laughs> I don't know where the money's coming from. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. Because, you know, in 1980, I think Arnold got $5,000 for winning the Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Olympia. Olympia show over in Australia, mm -hmm. and I had already retired, and they they asked me to come over there, and I wasn't even training, mm -hmm. so what I figured out, at that time, I was selling World Gym uh, uh, t-shirts and tank tops to World Gym, and Gold Gym, I was selling uh, them t-shirts and tank tops. Hmm. <laughs> and so I put 200 of each of them in duffel bags and took them with me on the on the plane over <laughs> to Australia. And so as soon as I got called up to pose, I posed real quick and ran back to my table and started selling these t-shirts. I, I sold all the t-shirts and tank tops and pictures and made more money than Arnold made for winning the Mr. Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. That's a good story. I think I've actually seen a photo of you um, at the Opera House. Uh, I don't know, somewhere inside it, selling the shirts and the tank tops. So I've, I've seen photos. Um, 
Now you mentioned that you always wanted your arms and your calves uh, similar in ratio to have that symmetrical look. And you've also mentioned that um, you used to watch a lot of Hercules movies with Steve Reeves. Would you then say that Steve Reeves was your idol when you first started bodybuilding? I would say yes. Awesome. Yeah. So, yep. so he I was mean, your... Everybody has, their own, everybody has their own idol. I think uh, Rich Park was Arnold's. Yeah. Uh, and I'd say Steve Reeves for me. Awesome. So we, you were trying to emulate, I mean, you didn't have his structure. You definitely had his height, but were you always, you said you weren't trying to overdevelop your legs. Were you always trying to have that idea of, of at least being symmetrical like Reeves um, or really just develop mass, get massive, which, which was your no, kind I of... Wasn't, it, no, I wasn't mass at all. I, I wanted to be more symmetrical. Mm -hmm. uh, because there was, a, you know, later on, uh, there there was uh, guys who came around and had great big, great big uh, legs, and you admire looking at them. But when you look at the overall body, it just doesn't look right. Or if you saw someone that was too muscular, you know, when you were if you were too muscular back uh, when you first started, uh, when I first started back in the early seventies or late sixties. You got you too muscular, you know. People like to look at the pictures, but they didn't win the shows. Yeah, you're right. So as we have heard from Ken Waller, he wanted his arms to be the same size as his calves. Basically, he was just chasing symmetry. He, like all bodybuilders back then, were looking for that symmetrical look, and he wanted to develop an aesthetically pleasing physique like Steve Reeves. With a tone of respect, Ken also criticizes modern bodybuilding, stating he could never do it like they do today, and rightly so. He gives the example of one particular bodybuilder he encountered, who like many, spent thousands on product in preparation for shows. On Steve Reeves, Reeves was in fact Ken Waller's idol. He, like many at the time, watched the Hercules movies, which was part of the reason that got him into bodybuilding. A funny story that Waller also mentioned was how after giving an exhibition at the 1980 Mr. Olympia, he made more money than Arnold, selling World Gym and Gold's Gym apparel, which I found pretty hilarious. And I hope that you are enjoying all of these funny stories that uh, Ken tends to uh, insert uh, in my answers. So um, I, I am really enjoying sharing these stories too. So that was Ken Waller on how he wanted to develop a symmetrical body like Steve Reeves. And if you have enjoyed the video, please give the video a like, subscribe and leave me your comments. In the next video, I ask Ken Waller whether golden era bodybuilders purposefully didn't train delts hard to make their delts look small. So stay tuned. I've actually been asked several times about this question, whether I can ask golden era bodybuilders. So it was my opportunity to do so. And Ken does answer this question very well. So that's it from me. This is the golden era bookworm saying bye for now. Head to www.goldenerabookworm.com for the biggest range of classic old school bodybuilding books as ebooks, e-magazines such as Iron Man and Reg Park Journal, high quality bodybuilding posters of the golden era stars, merchandise and classic gym wear featuring Steve Reeves, Marvin Eda, John Grimmick, Reg Park and many other golden era stars. For those wishing to build a classic physique, lose fat and build muscle, online training is also available. Collectibles such as rare autographed photos from the golden era stars are also available and to collaborate, please get in touch. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Not all of us have the time to go to a gym or the opportunity to have a coach to teach us one-on-one. -on -one 
But with the Future Fitness app, it's like having a personal trainer in your living room. From February 11th onwards, you can try the Future Fitness app for only $19 for the first month. Think of what you can accomplish during that first month. So go on and hit my link at tryfuture.co slash GEB to get started. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Gironda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles, but how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14 month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And of course the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com.